little bit late to the party, two years late to the party, but I finally caught up on The Boys season three. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Let me know, what did you think about The Boys season three when you watched it two years ago when it actually aired? So the first two seasons of The Boys, I did cover when they first dropped, but when season three came out, I got a little bit in my own head and I wanted to rewatch the first two seasons so I could do a ranking of all three seasons. And then it was just kind of a busy time in life. And The Boys is one of those shows that's just pretty intense. And so I have to be in the right mindset to want to watch a show that's this <laughs> rated R for lack of a better phrase. And so I ended up watching like the first two episodes, whatever the first episodes they dropped were. And I didn't end up watching the rest of the season because I didn't end up rewatching the first two seasons. So I knew I finally wanted to catch up with season four dropping this week, and I was finally able to do that. And luckily, even being two years late to the party, I was able to avoid any spoilers regarding this season. But as we go into this review, this is a spoiler review, just so you know, if you haven't watched the season yet, go watch it. You're, too, you're even later than I am to the party. Then come and join the conversation over here. And now having finally watched the season, I thought it was a solid season of the show. And what I enjoyed about it is that as Homelander gets crazier and crazier and they mo know more and more about him, the stakes and the desperation keeps getting bigger and bigger thus leading our heroes to compromise whatever values they have more and more so. So Butcher all along the way has already compromised almost everything. And then you have a season where it's, let's see how far Butcher really will go and push, pushes him so far into becoming the thing that he hates, even continuing to do so when he knows it might kill him and pulling Huey into that with them. And right along those same lines, Huey has always been a little bit of the moral compass of the boys, where he's not a wacko like Butcher. He's just someone that's been very angry and sees the corruption is trying to do something about it, but is much more balanced. And then you, you keep pushing him further and he thinks he's do, serving, uh, trying to help in a context where he's not having to, to go against his morals, helping this this politician lady, and then he learns, no, even there, he's in the middle of this corrupt system. He's helping someone that is another one of these lying soups that kills people, and through it all kind of just gets pushed further and further into desperation, and so you see him become the worst version of himself, but in a way that you can see what pushed him each step. There's multiple different reasons behind why he goes down this path. Some of it is simply he's angry and he's acting out of emotion. And then he gets powers. And then there's you know intoxication to that of like wanting to continue down that path and continue to see things getting worse and worse and seeing potentially the end to it when Homelander's dead. And that goal is in sight that maybe that can happen. And so just I just have to compromise a little bit longer, live in this, this dark space a little bit longer to obtain this thing we've been working for so long for the greater good. I know I'm doing bad stuff, but I'm stopping someone worse. And that's kind of the world where I, this show is at its best when it is kind of in this very murky, nasty space where our supposed heroes are actually really bad, and even the people trying to stop the people that are worse are doing bad things, and so just this all sorts of moral complexity and earning that. It feels justified. You understand where everyone's coming from. And so the even the division amongst our boys where you've got two of them off on this mission with Soldier Boy, while everyone else is like, stop what are you doing don't continue going down this path um other thing you got to talk about in here of course is this the soldier boy plot line where uh continuing to explore the the history of soups 
and bringing in this Captain America type figure who once again is just as awful as so many of these other characters, but is the, the face of being a hero. And they, they use Paul Reiser's character to kind of, kind of make that social commentary in there about kind of the nature of a, a kind of an American arrogance of we're all the hero in our own story. And so you have to have the faces to that. That's, you know, that's interesting. That's a interesting observation and <laughs> entertaining, but also very harsh way to put that in front of us through this soldier boy character, but also using the soldier boy character to uh, explore the history of the seven. We learn how these big revelations about where Homelander came from. That was the big one where it's like, oh, that's his dad. I Okay. Somehow that wasn't spoiled for me, even though I'm on the internet all the time and None of these twists and turns were, were exposed for me. But yeah, seeing Jensen Ackles just playing just this despic despicable Captain America Superman blend character. Um, just a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I remember him going back to when he first appeared on Smallville before he was on Supernatural. So then being on um, uh, uh, in The Boys was just a, a fun little pleasant surprise and not surprise. As if two years later, I know he's in the show. That's not what a surprise is. Still pleasant to have him join all of the fun. Uh, I guess other other kind of big ones in there, the continued use of commentary on social media, news coverage, the polarization of America, and how deeply entrenched people are in believing what they want to believe despite evidence right in front of them. I think what the show does well is it, well, it doesn't always do this well. Sometimes I think it veers off from this, but you, you know the creator's political ideology, but they're, they also take constant shots at, at every, every side. And so you, you have the stand in for the, the Trump supporters, but you also have them poking fun at corporate virtue signaling and celebrities using social justice causes to prop themselves up while not caring about uh, the causes whatsoever. And it takes aim at all of the different things and all of these different ways that um, media, celebrity are used um, to explain exploit causes, to exploit the public, to take advantage of us. And I think it's at its best when it, not that it doesn't have its own perspective and view on things, but that it sees all of the hypocrisy. It sees all of the toxic patterns and, and calls all of it out. Um, it's when it's most effective. And I think there's a lot of that in this season where it felt every episode were, were taken aim at, uh, all of the corruption in celebrity, politics, media, all of it. Um, to that point, this the, the first season where A-Train feels like he has an actual character arc. Not just, he's always had plot lines, he's always had major plot lines, but you feel the character growing as he realizes his irrelevance as he loses his powers. And through his desperate desire to remain relevant, it starts just trying to pander to people and using social causes to do that. And through this starts to realize like, wait, wait, what on earth am I doing? Has some self-awareness finally starts to realize the reality of everything that he's doing. And then has the moment where uh, the, his brother gets seriously harmed in a context where a train is being used basically for cover to prop up someone that clearly uh, is a horrible racist that should be faced justice for this, but they use a train to kind of balance that out and his brother gets harmed in it. And it's like this moment where a train finally realizes like, wait, this stuff's jacked up. He sees what everyone else, every viewer of the show realized in the first five minutes of the show. It's like, wait, what's going on here? But it, it doesn't fully make him a better person. There's still just a 
dark corruption to him. So he gets revenge, kills a person, which is the last thing his brother would want because he's still deeply broken. And they had this kind of whole journey for him where he has more layers and complexity with everything kind of going on with him. Um, I don't know. There's, there's always so many more things to talk about, but uh, since each character, they have all these subplots and everything. I would say on kind of a more negative side, uh, the trick with a show like this, that part of the appeal is how extreme it is. And like, yeah, we're willing to, to we're going to take the Ant-Man Thanos meme and we're going to do that in the first 10 minutes of our season, except we're going to have a little guy run into a guy's wiener and then he's going to get big and blow it up. We're going to just flip the subvert expectations on that whole Thanos thing and this whole sexual experience in a very unexpected way. And you go to the hero gasm episode and that like, that's what the show's known for. There's a certain point in time with a lot of it where it just feels like we're doing, we, we have to be edgy. We have to do this stuff. Whereas when it's best, it feels earned. It feels like the natural continuation of this very dark, bleak show that dwells in that realm. Other ones it just feels like, right. Well, I mean, we're the boys. We have to have this. We have to like go for it. We have to be extreme. You go, okay. When you're at your best, you earned it though. You're in a world that allows that and has fun with it. But are you just trying to be edgy to be edgy? This season, I felt, had the most of those because it's like, we're going to go even further this season. We're going to take the hero grasp of the comics. We're going to do that. We're going for it just to prove that they can always outdo themselves. Shouldn't just be talking about how edgy it is for the sake of being edgy. It should be there to expand the world and make things feel earned. And some of that was a little bit questionable to me on this season. Uh, in general, this season felt a little bit like a course correction for me. Um, season two, I, I felt it got, um, having the boys on the run, uh, in theory, I think is a strong dynamic because there's an urgency in, to it where we're in constant tension and danger. I think in practice, it became such a limitation on what they could do on the show and the scenarios our characters could be in because they, they have to be in only, they always have to be in hiding and that just holds you back. And so then having this season taking place where Hugh is publicly Starlight's boyfriend, it that openness to it, I think is where the show thrives a little bit better because it is these villains in plain sight. They're pretending to be heroes. They're in plain sight. Sometimes in plain sight doing very evil things and people are okay with it. That's the more interesting dynamic, I would say, than um, the, the hiding dynamic that was in season two. And some other things about season two just weren't as, as strong for me. So this one felt like a bit of a course correction. Anyway, those are just... Wanted to share some thoughts on it uh, since I finally was able to, to watch it. Um, this is sort of a review, sort of me just kind of unpacking my experience um, once having having watched it. Uh, let me know what you thought down below. I'll have some coverage of season four now that it's dropping this week. And keep talking movies and TV too.